Hello and welcome to Learn to Code, the Functions chapter, and we're in Activity 7 called Treasure Hunt today, the last activity in the Functions chapter. After this uh, chapter, we'll move on to Loops. Okay, so today this challenge is to uh, use again um, this idea of decomposing our problem into small pieces and then maybe making some functions that call other functions again using this idea of procedural composition where we make larger procedures or more complex procedure out of smaller simpler procedures okay so um, this is what we're given here today we're given this puzzle that has it looks like one two three four five six six uh, switches we need to toggle on okay there's some symmetry in the puzzle the left side and the right side are the same and the top and bottom are similar so we should be able to identify some patterns in here um, that'll help us write functions to solve this uh, challenge okay uh, the description here gives a suggestion that we should use this code a function move then toggle and move then toggle is simply two move forwards and a toggle switch so let's try let's just call this function and watch what byte does oops not move forward we need to make the function first so let's say func move then toggle move then toggle is simply a move forward followed by another move forward, followed by a toggle switch. Okay, and let's call the function now, move, then toggle. Okay, so once our function is defined here, we can then call it in our main program. So let's call it, watch what byte does. Moves forward twice, and then he toggles a switch, and that's it. Okay, so the goal here is we're supposed to use this move then toggle function and build up some more complex functions to help us solve the puzzle all right all right and we're well on our way here um, in fact one thing we might want to do is uh, if we bring byte back to where he came from then if he's facing the opposite way we can call move then toggle again and he'll go get this switch over on the left hand side so uh, let's do that let's let's write a function that brings byte back to where he came from okay and uh, so right in here we'll say func return return back and I'm gonna call it return back to because he's gonna be coming back two squares okay so to return back, before he can come back, he needs to turn around. So I'm going to say turn around, turn around, and then move forward, and move forward. Okay. And uh, this turn around is going to cause us an error. And just to review, that error says use of unresolved identifier, turn around. The identifier turn around. Uh, doesn't exist so we need to create that identifier identifier could be a variable or a function and in this case it's a function that it doesn't know what it is and that's because we haven't written it yet so func turn around and let's just give a couple of turn rights in here turn right turn right okay now that should make our error go away it does and um, so move then toggle uh, let's go ahead and then say return back to return back to and make sure this works and he gets back to where he comes from okay good okay all right um, so that's exactly what we want now, um, uh, we could um, combine these two things together, maybe into another function. When I say these two things, I mean a move then toggle and a return back to, okay? So we could maybe call this, uh, let's see, what's a good name for this? Funk 
solve uh, two square puzzle, something like that. Solve two square puzzle. And what I mean by that is that I'm solving a part of the puzzle where Byte has to go two squares away from himself, toggle a switch, and then come back. Okay, so we're going to get these two things here. I'm going to grab them both. I'm going to cut them out of here and put them in here. Okay, now all we need to do is call our solve two square puzzle. And then if we do it again, he's going to solve the one right in front of him. Solve two square puzzle. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. So solve two square puzzle calls move then toggle, move then toggle calls move forward, move forward, toggle switch, and then solve two square puzzle calls return back to, and then we solve two square puzzle again, and comes back. Okay, good. All right. Now at this point, we can go handle one of these other ones. Maybe it'll be, <coughs> we're going to have a, a, a function in here called solve four square puzzle. So func solve four square puzzle. Okay, and what I mean by that is I want to solve the uh, solve the parts of the puzzle that are going, you know, toward the top of the screen and toward the bottom of the screen, uh, where the uh, there are uh, I need to travel a distance of four squares to get all the uh, to toggle all the switches. Okay. So as with, uh, in, as with the solve two square puzzle, we want to see if we can rely on um, some of the things we've done in the, uh, some of the code we've already written here. So, so to solve a four square puzzle, we definitely want to go up and get uh, maybe move two and then toggle, but we don't want to turn around at that point. So we don't want to call solve two square pu puzzle because that'll Go, go toggle the switch and then bring us back. But if we call move then toggle, that'll get us part way there. So move then toggle, we'll go two forward, toggle the switch, and then we want to move two more forward and toggle the switch. So let's call it again. Move then toggle, we'll go the rest of the way uh, up the distance. Then we want to come back uh, turn around and come back all the way. Okay, turn around and come back all the way. So to do that, we could call our return back to. That gets us turned around and part of the way back. So let's call that in here. Return back to. And then we also just need to move forward two more after that. So move forward and move forward. Let's say after we solve the left and the right uh, wings of the puzzle here, let's go get the one at the top. So we'll say turn left, turn left, and then solve the four square puzzle. Okay, turn left, and then solve the four square puzzle. Let's go ahead and watch it go. And when we go here, I'm going to run it by stepping through our code to watch these functions get called step through my code. Solve two square puzzle gets called. It calls move then toggle. Our move then toggle does a move forward, move forward, toggle switch. Returns back to the solve two square puzzle which re calls return back to, which does a turn around and heads back to. Now we come back to where we come, came from and we solve a two square puzzle again. So that does this all over again. It's a lot of fun watching our functions call other functions. Okay, turn left, and now we're going to solve our four square puzzle. Four square puzzle calls move then toggle, which moves us forward two and toggles the switch. And then it calls that again. Move forward, move forward, toggle switch. And then we're going to return back two, which turns us around, move forward, move forward. And then all we're going to do is return back to solve four square puzzle and move forward and move forward. Okay, so we're well on our way. 
What's the last thing we need to do here? That's right. We need to call solve four square puzzle one more time, and that should do it. Uh, we'll just run it faster. Okay, he's solving the four square puzzle. Coming back, now he's going to solve four square puzzle again. Good, I did it. All right, so we had a good, uh, this is a nice summary here. Um, we have a main program that's fairly short. It just solves two square puzzle twice here. Then we turn left and we solve four square puzzle twice. So we have function calls that handle this wing right here. We have, uh, then we have a function call that handles this wing right here. Then we turn left and we have a function call that handles this wing right here. And then we keep on going and we have a function call that handles this wing right here. All right, that's it. So a nice short main program and it's readable. Uh, we can understand it at, at a high level uh, what this what this program is doing. Uh, but all the work is done in these functions. Some of them are nested within other functions, calls to some functions nested within other functions. And we're using this idea of procedural composition, where we're composing very complex, very complex procedures like solve four square puzzle by building it up of uh, less complex pieces. Move then toggle, move then toggle, but even move then toggle is fairly complex if you look at it. And even return back to uh, is fairly complex where we have a turnaround which calls another function in here and a move forward and a move forward. So, all right. So if you're uh, if you're finding yourself uh, at least understanding this and um, using your uh, skills at decomposition, decomposing a problem into small pieces, you're writing some uh, functions that that handle subparts of each one of these puzzles and then building up solutions based on those. Um, sub solutions, then uh, you're in great shape. Um, if, if not, uh, I want to go back, and it's not always not a bad idea to go back and uh, do some of these puzzles again uh, back at the beginning of the functions chapter. Uh, go back and, and start working through some of these again. Watch the videos again, and by the time you get through it again, I think you'll have a good handle on these functions. It's worth spending the time on this because every program you write for the rest of your programming career, uh, I guarantee will have at least one function in there that you're using. They're just such an important part of programming. So and we've got another important part of programming coming up, loops. Um, so I look forward to that, and we'll see you next time.